Hello, hello, more Dimmers here and welcome to the anniversary. Chess anniversary because 225 years ago François André Philidor passed away. And who was Monsieur Philidor? Uh, it was actually the father of modern chess. Uh, before Philidor, we had, you know, a very happy chess. Sacrifice one, two, three, four pawns, open the diagonals, open the fights, checkmate your opponent. That was the chess before Philidor. But Philidor said that the pawns don't need to be a cannon fodder. The pawns actually are the soul of the chess. So uh, what should the pawns do? Control the center, help to control the center, do it the solid way. And then, you know, from the center, once you control it, it's much easier to play. Your pieces, you know, can reach all the sides of the chessboard um, and so on. So he was the best in the world for over 50 years. However, he started his career in the in the choir, royal choir of the of the King Louis XV. And uh, whenever the king wanted to listen to choir, of course, the boys had to wait first. And so um, they played chess for fun. And then Philidor, who was from the musician family uh, for a couple of generations, very famous French um, musician family, uh, then he started to be interested in chess more and more and started to come also to Café de Regence uh, and play with the players over there, the most famous chess cafe in Paris. Uh, and I would like to show you the game uh, where François André Philidor gonna play as white. And I estimate his ranking. This is not the, you know, um, you know, real estimation. But however, he was the first person who was named uh, much later as a grandmaster. So uh, I think it's just to honor him 25. 500 is not the real strength, of course. Uh, however, you know, he was the best in the world, so why not? Uh, feel free to disagree, of course, in the comment section. And his opponent, the most famous player in the chess history. His name is Nomeneschio. And if you <laughs> never heard that, probably you saw only the abbreviation NN. And that's abbreviation for Nomeneschio. And that means I don't know the name. So this guy actually played a lot of games and all, most of these games were lost but by Nomeneschio. And um, anyhow, without further ado, let's see what happened on the board. Philidor opens with e4. We have e5, knight f3, and now Nomeneschio played d6. Philidor's defense against Philidor himself. Uh, very interesting. Now we have d4, uh, the best move in the position. And here, nowadays in 21st century, e takes on d4 is the, is the main move. And after knight d4, knight f6, knight c3, very similar to Sicilian defense. However, there is no pawn uh, on e7, uh, but there is the pawn on c7. So if you imagine the pawn on e7, then we would have the Sicilian defense. And very uh, similar ideas however quite different uh, bishop e7 uh, bishop e2 and after castle castle usually what black do is uh, rook e8 and f4 and the game can continue and it was played on the top level uh, for example Shahriyar Mamediarov likes this as white as black uh, and other uh, grandmasters as well However, in this position, we have quite a sideline, knight d7. And it's a very tricky one because a couple of uh, famous Philidor traps, you know, starts with knight d7. Uh, and now, you know, black can set up some traps, but there are also the traps for white. So both sides need to know, you know, what to do, what they are doing, because it looks like very passive, you know, Philidor defensive is passive, but Daniel Dubov, for example, example, uh, show in 2020 how to win in Philidor defense against Magnus Carlsen. So why not? There are a lot of tricks here. Uh, Bishop c4, this is the main move, then c6, uh, keep under control d5, uh, very important. Otherwise, for example, this knight can jump to d5. Uh, so in Sicilian defense, you, you, you usually you play e6, uh, but in Philidor you can play, for example, c6. Also, this diagonals is open for the for the queen. Uh, and now what white usually play in this position is castle, knight c3, normal development. However, Philidor uh, went for knight g5, quite aggressive. 
uh, pointing on f7. So not much choice for, for black, of course, we have knight h6. And now very important move, believe me or not, this is not the strongest move in the position. This is not even, you know, top five moves in the position. However, in 20th century, we have 12 games in the database on the top level where A4 is played. And why A4 is played? Because 230 years ago, in 1790, François-André Philidor played A4. So even now, in 21st century, this move, you know, is the most popular. This is the only move in the position, you know, other moves on the top level are not even played. Now, what is the idea? How do you think? What is the idea? It's very good moment to think why to play A4. It doesn't make much sense. However, it's a very, very subtle trap. And now, what to play as black? Most of the players would think, okay, it looks like it's quite dangerous here, so maybe I should play, you know, bishop e7 and castle. And this is the problem. The only good move in this position is actually e takes on d4. Extremely important move. Uh, and why it's so important? Because the fifth rank uh, is now open and especially the e5 square and i will explain you soon why it's so important but for now bishop e7 was played by the opponent and this is time to actually pause the video and find the winning sequence for white is everything is forced so from now you know as white you can win this position and and yeah while i enjoy my cup of tea Okay, ready? So bishop f7 is the only forced move. And now if the king goes to f8, then of course we have a very nasty fork and the queen is lost. So that's the first winning continuation. Or knight f7, this was played in the game. Uh, and then knight e6, attacking the queen, controlling c7. So the queen has only two squares to go. And it doesn't really matter where queen b6 or queen a5 in our game we have queen a5 and now bishop d2 and now if e takes on d4 was played before then the queen could escape actually to e5 uh, and black would win the game however it was not played this is why it's so important for now where to go with the queen queen a6 is is guarded actually by the very nice tactic this is the fork on the queen and the and the king so it's not possible this is why we have queen b6 and now very important move a5 so if the queen moves to 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 b6 first then a5 can be played and if the queen moves to to b4 then bishop d2 but in our game the queen has nowhere to go again uh, if the queen goes somewhere here it's defended by the tactic uh, of course, uh, the queen gonna be lost. And also, the pawn cannot be taken because it's defended by the knight. So, the only square to go is actually b2. So, queen b2 was played in our game. And after bishop c3, Mr. Nomen Nescio resigned. He gonna lose the queen. So, what a beautiful game. What a beautiful tactic. And believe me or not, believe me or not, but after a4... We still have couple of candidates, you know, the players, strong player, 2200 players who still fall into that trap and play bishop e7. So they play, you know, knight d7 without knowing this trap. Very interesting in the 21st century where people, you know, uh, follow um, the database, follow the strongest continuations, but they don't really not always, you know, understand what can happen. This is why, you know, it's quite important uh, to know the the games of the old masters because you know they they probably played all the positions and all the ideas which could be played in the openings already uh, so yeah that's all for today if you like this video press like if for some reason you don't like it uh, press and like and if you don't want to miss another videos quality videos like this one press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one